so you're saying I can ask this cat any question? The cat is connected to the computer. You just type in the question, it will read his mind. There the answer comes. You're the man! I've been looking for this for weeks. We're going to determine the equations of any asymptotes and then graph the following rational function. So let's start by determining the vertical asymptotes. The vertical asymptotes occur at zeros of the denominator that are not also zeros of the numerator. So in determining the vertical asymptotes, it is important that we see if the given rational function actually factors and then simplifies. So notice how our denominator is a difference of squares. So we can rewrite this as the quantity x plus 3 all over the quantity x plus 3 times the quantity x minus 3. So notice how there's a common factor of x plus 3. So x equals negative 3 is a zero of both the denominator and the numerator, which means we don't have a vertical asymptote. We have a whole at x equals negative 3. So let's go ahead and start by recording that. We have a whole at x equals negative 3. So now we can actually graph the simplified function of 1 over the quantity x minus 3 as long as we remember that there's a hole at x equals negative 3. So going back to the vertical asymptote, the vertical asymptote will occur where x minus 3 is equal to 0. So the equation of the vertical asymptote is x equals 3. So it is important that we first consider where the function may have a hole before we determine any vertical asymptotes. And again, holes occur at the zeros of any common factors between the numerator and denominator. Let's go ahead and sketch our vertical asymptote at x equals 3. Now let's determine the horizontal asymptote. To determine the horizontal asymptote, we need to determine the limit as x approaches either positive or negative infinity. Let's approach positive infinity and again, we can go ahead and use the simplified function as long as you remember there's a hole at x equals negative 3. So notice that as x approaches positive infinity, the denominator is increasing without bound and the numerator is staying at 1, which means this limit will equal 0. The shortcut method is, the shortcut method to determine this limit is if the degree of the denominator is greater than the degree of the numerator, the limit will always be 0. The degree of our denominator is 1, and the degree of our numerator would be 0. So let's go ahead and sketch our vertical asymptote, which has an equation of y equals 0. So from here, to graph this function, we'll make a t-table to find additional points. Let's start by letting x equals 0, which would give us the y-intercept. Notice if x is 0, the function value would be negative one-third, which is our y-intercept. So zero negative one-third would be somewhere in here. Now let's try x equals two. Notice if x equals two, we would have one all over two minus three, or one over negative one, which is equal to negative one. So the point two negative one is on our function, which would be right here. So the function must pass through these two points and approach the horizontal and vertical asymptotes. So it's going to look something like this. Except did you notice what I forgot? Remember we have a hole at x equals negative 3. So right here at negative 3 we're going to make an open point to show there's a hole there. So now we just need to determine some points to the right of positive 3 to complete our graph. Let's try x equals 4. If x is equal to 4, we would have 1 all over 4 minus 3, or 1 over 1, which is equal to 1. So the point 4, 1 is on our function, which is probably more than enough information to complete our graph. The function must pass through this point and then approach the asymptotes. So it will approach the vertical asymptote from here, 
as well as the horizontal asymptote. So just by knowing the horizontal and vertical asymptotes and determining three other points, we were able to make a nice graph of the function, remembering that we did have a hole at x equals negative 3.